First story is titled, Am I the a-hole for saying I no longer trust my brother or his wife around my kid? Okay, so you'll need some context here first. I am a single father to a five-year-old son and his mother isn't involved. She was incredibly manipulative and verbally slash emotionally abusive. For a few reasons, the courts awarded me full custody of our kid. She was allowed visitation, but basically said, I get full custody or nothing at all, and hasn't made any attempt to contact our son for three and a half years. To be honest, I prefer it this way. She's a very toxic person who has repeatedly demonstrated an unwillingness to change, and she runs with some people who don't want my son around. If she comes back and demonstrates a willingness to put effort to be better to our son, she can see him. But till then, I'm very on board with her staying away. I've found being a single parent difficult at times and have needed a lot of help slash support. This help has often been provided by my older brother and sister-in-law. They've done things like taking me to appointments, cared for kiddo while I worked slash went back to school, helped with the bills slash groceries when I was on my butt financially, paid for kiddo to do activities I couldn't afford with his friends to keep him from being left out. They've honestly been an absolute lifeline for me, and I just want to establish off the bat that I am incredibly grateful for all they've done for me. During lockdown 3, brother and sister-in-law have been watching kiddo while I work. They're both working from home, and they have absolutely refused to let me pay them for it. Well, during this time, my son has been asking more and more questions about his mom, which I've done my best to answer in age-appropriate ways. He's also been getting upset about her not being around more and more. It really sprang out of nowhere. So I was confused until a few days ago when he said Auntie Laura kept telling him things about mommy and they were different to things I had told him. I asked what kind of things she said, and I'll spare you the details for the sake of character count, can clarify in comments, but it was incredibly inappropriate stuff. I'm so angry about this. My kid is upset and I'm in a very awkward position. My sister-in-law went behind my back I confronted her and my brother about it, and they both got very defensive, saying I can't expect her to badmouth her friend, and I'm being unreasonable. I said that it's not unreasonable to want to protect my kid, and that they've demonstrated that I can't trust them around him. I've even stopped letting them watch him, and my neighbor's doing it instead. They're really upset with me. My brother called me an ungrateful a-hole, and my sister-in-law says she can't believe I'm being like this over one little thing after all they've done. Am I overreacting? Edit realizes I deleted a kind of important points for character count. My ex and sister-in-law were friends at secondary school and college, which is how my ex and I met. They're not as close as they used to be, but they're still casual friends. Edit 2. People said I should include this from the comments on the post, so here it is. My ex made a lot of accusations about me that were provable false during the trial, part of the reason she didn't get custody. This includes accusing me of being a serial cheater. I wasn't and could prove I was in other places at times when she said I was with other people. Accusing me of causing an injury she got in a car accident I wasn't even present for, and saying that I was the one who was emotionally abusive. She told him that the reason his mom and I fell out was because I felt like she was very unkind to me, and mommy felt like I had other girlfriends, hurt her, and was the unkind one. She didn't say any of the accusations were true, but she didn't say they weren't either. And obviously, a five-year-old doesn't have the critical thinking skills to figure it out for himself. Not so much that she lied herself, she just repeated my ex's lies. Now, for the top comments. Not day haul. Your ex was so horrible that the courts didn't give her any custody. Hard to badmouth such a person. Sister-in-law placed her need to talk up her friend above the needs of a child that was clearly becoming more upset and anxious the more she talked. You're doing what it takes to protect your child, Opie. Clearly, sister-in-law wants to protect someone else. And even if sister-in-law somehow thought the friend was different, she still hasn't seen her own child for nearly four years of her own volition. She's a horrible parent for that, at a minimum. I wouldn't trust either of them around my hypothetical child. Not a hole. Tell your brother this. I am grateful for everything you have done for myself and my son. But gratitude is not the same as obligation. My only obligations are to my child. And that includes being obligated to not leave him alone with someone who lies to him about me and upsets him, no matter what they have done for us. Sister-in-law did not have to say anything about X, neither good nor bad. She could have said nothing because it wasn't her place to talk about our relationship to my son, and the fact that she has gotten defensive and wants to act like this is no big deal 
leads me to believe she would do it again. I'm sorry that it has come to this, but my son's well-being comes ahead of anyone else's feelings. Period. Added to Ed, just wanted to throw it out there since this comet has gotten some attention that I don't think it's probably necessary to never let your kid see his aunt and uncle again, and maybe stress that to your brother too. It sounds like he loves your son a lot, and it would be a shame for this to cause a bigger rift that it needs to. You can't set boundaries without cutting them out of your lives. No unsupervised visits would be totally reasonable at this point. Not a hole. Your sister-in-law and brother sound like are overriding your great parenting. The courts decided that you're a fit parent and your ex is not. They do not get to override that decision. Also, I would not be surprised if that's why they are so willing and ready to be in this kid's life. Is she feeding information about the son to the ex? I know she hasn't seen him because I'm sure the son would tell. Tinfoil hat theory. If she's really super toxic, could she be using all of this to build a case to get some sort of custody? I don't know if she's changed her mind and now wants to see her son. Saying that other people are the primary caregivers paying for stuff and activities could be a way to prove he isn't fit. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not taking my son to my mother after I found out she has been going through my kid's phone? So, a bit of context. I, 36 female, have never been close to my mother. She was verbally and emotionally abusive constantly disregarded my privacy and got mad at everything I did. When she found out I was a bi at the age of 17 by reading my messages, she kicked me out. I went no contact for quite a while until I had my son, now 15 male. It took some convincing from my sister and aunt, but I decided to let my mom see her grandson. I don't really talk to her, because I can't forgive everything she put me through. But she's a great grandmother, and my son and her get along very well. On to the story. I was working late, so I left my son to my mom and took off. When I came back to pick him up, I saw that woman going through my son's phone while he was upstairs watching TV. I started screaming and asking what she was doing. She said that she was parenting my own kid, and said that she was being responsible for making sure he doesn't end up like me. I take the phone away from her in an instant and take my son so we can leave. Later that night after my son was sleeping, I called my mother screaming at her and saying that she had no right to go through his private stuff or to tell me how to mother my own child. She got angrier and said I was ungrateful and that she was only trying to help. However, I think I might also be the a-hole because I am refusing to take my son to my mother right now and I don't know if that's the right decision. By the way, I did talk to my son about this one specific incident and he also is okay with not going to his grandma. He just doesn't know the story behind me and my mom. Not at A-Hall, but at 15, I think your son should know some of the background. He should know what she is like. Couldn't Opie's son also stay on his own instead of being watched? Not at A-Hall. All I really needed to read was, she was verbally and emotionally abusive. If your mother was abusive to you, that was more than enough to deny her contact with her child. But you gave her a chance anyway. What she did shows she didn't change at all. It's best that you keep her away from your son. This, all of this, I know what my mother and aunt did to me as a kid, but it was only three to four years after we cut contact with them did my kids finally feel safe to tell my husband and I things that happened to them growing up with those evil women. I was angry, heartbroken, and felt so guilty. I wish I knew way earlier to stop it. If your parent was abusive to you, they definitely are to your kids when your back is turned. Not at A-Hall. She violated his privacy. Does he know what she did? He needs to know if he doesn't. Yes, we talked, but I only mentioned her going through his phone. The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for kidnapping my brother? I, 26 female, have a tense relationship with my parents. I would have gone no contact with them if it weren't for my little brother, Pete. Pete loves singing, to the great disapproval of our parents. They hate that Pete chose singing instead of more manly hobbies. Despite their disapproval, I always encouraged his passion. I even got him a vocal course for his birthday a couple years ago. After a huge argument, parents let him attend the course. So, to the AITA situation. For Valentine's Day, Brother School organized a love song competition. Students that wanted to take part had to submit a recording of themselves singing. Every video is then published on school's Facebook page. Pete decided to take part in the competition. 
He sang a Sally song from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And since my fiance is a photographer and has his own studio, Pete asked for his help filming the video. Fiance agreed. Pete came over, his part of our bubble, so to speak. Fiance even helped him edit in some cool visual effects. Everything seemed to be fine until yesterday. Pete showed up at my doorsteps in tears. I took him in, and after he calmed down, he told me what happened. From what I gathered, our parents saw the video of him singing on Facebook and absolutely blew up. He said that they were screaming like crazy, called him an embarrassment, and forbid him from attending any more singing lessons that he's been paying for from his own money. After they told him to get out of their sight, he gathered some essentials and walked out. Then he took a cab to my place. Pete asked to stay with me, and I naturally told him that he can stay as long as he wants. Our parents must have figured where Pete is when he didn't return in the evening because they called me. They were angry I helped with the video, said they know he's here and were demanding to speak with him. I didn't know what to say, so I played dumb. Didn't deny nor confirm my brother being here. They threatened to call the police on me for kidnapping. And at that point, I hung up and have been ignoring their calls ever since. They must have contacted some of the family because I've been getting many texts with people telling me to bring my brother back home. That he's just a rebelling teenager, cussing me out, even threatening to call police. Pete is 17, will be 18 in two weeks. He doesn't want to go back to our parents. I need to stay calm for my brother's sake, but it's so hard with people threatening me with calling police for kidnapping. I tried talking to Pete, told him that he doesn't have to do anything he isn't comfortable with, but that maybe he should talk to our parents. He says maybe, but not yet. Right now, he hates them and everyone on their side. So Reddit, am I the a-hall for kidnapping my brother? Now for the comments. Not the a-hall. Get him call the police and let them know what's happening, given the fact that he's two weeks shy of being a legal adult. That way, when your parents report the kidnapping, the police will already have prior knowledge of what's happened. I'd also be expecting for the crap to hit the fan big time too. Get the police to go with your brother and some of his or your friends to pick up his belongings. Most importantly, his birth certificate, social security number, passport, and bank details. First thing Monday morning, take him to the bank. Close his account and withdraw his money or do so now so your parents can take it. And open a new account at the different bank and lock down his credit so that no one can run up debts in his name. The reason I'm saying to ask for a police escort is so that they can't refuse him his legal documents and can't abuse him. Get him to speak to the guidance counselor at school for some advice. And I'd suggest as soon as he has all his belongings, get him to counseling and put his parents in time out. Most importantly, call the police and report this now. I'm glad that he's got two people looking out for him, and I wish you all the best. This is a great advice. Thank you. It didn't even cross my mind to take some of the precautions you mentioned. Not a hole. He's 18 soon. From that moment, he is free to make his own decisions. I'm glad he has you in his life, but taking on a care of a teenager is very hard. I believe it is, but I'm committed to doing what's best for Pete. He has had it hard already. After reading your comments, I have to chime in. Do not wait to withdraw his money. Just because parents never touched his money doesn't mean they wouldn't do it in the future. They still have 14 days to steal it. As soon as Pete is legal, open a new account at another bank. Do not choose a bank where your parents have an account. There are enough helpful people in the banking business who would help your parents gain access to his account. Otherwise, top comment already said everything you should. I really, really don't want to wait, believe me, but it seems like there's no other option. Pete has a limit on his card to how much money he can transfer in 24 hours, so he's unable to empty his account all at once. He'll be able to separate his account from parents once he turns 18. Tomorrow, we'll be calling a bank to find out if there's a possibility to secure his money in any way. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for asking my daughter if she was imagining her symptoms? Two years ago, my ex-wife and I were going through a divorce that was made tough by the fact that our son, then 15, was dying of a brain tumor. I noticed that my daughter, 16 female, has started eating a lot more during that time, always very late at night, but I was too occupied with dealing with my soon-to-be ex always yelling at me, saying I wasn't doing enough to be there for her emotionally, accusing me of abandonment and withholding affection from me, to realize that my daughter was also going to the bathroom to throw the food she ate up. After the dust from the divorce cleared up, 
I found out about my daughter's bulimia from my ex-wife. My daughter told me she felt like her mind at times compels her to feel like she needs more and more food. After the talk and time had passed with my daughter adjusting to her new normal, I thought that she wasn't throwing up anymore. However, in the past few months, my daughter had admitted to feeling stressed because her mother was crying every day because they were approaching what would have been her brother's 18th birthday. My ex has also been stressed about her underwater mortgage. Yesterday, my fiancé and I had driven up to her vacation home for our planned Valentine's Day staycation. I get a call from my ex-wife saying that my daughter has been suffering from heart palpitations and was feeling faint, so she was admitted to the hospital. A few hours later, my daughter called and talked to me about her symptoms over the phone, saying she felt she was having a heart attack and said that she had started binging and purging again recently. A lot of the symptoms she was talking about I thought could have also been caused by an uptick in negative emotions. My daughter was bulimic before the past couple of months and she herself said a lot of her physical needs came from her mind first. My daughter then asked if I could come see her soon and I reminded that I had planned this with my fiancé for a while now. My daughter sounded upset and said she really wanted me here and I was suspicious that she subconsciously wanted to sabotage any plans I had because she was in an emotional roller coaster over her late brother's upcoming 18th birthday. I asked my daughter if she by any chance was imagining all her symptoms. I reminded her that she had admitted to needing to eat before realizing it was all in her head and asked if this was another stunt her mind was pulling. My daughter got mad and said she literally nearly fainted and said she couldn't believe I thought she was faking. She then hung up on me. Later, my ex-wife said hospital recommended her to a bulimia treatment program and doctors said she risked a cardiac arrest if she continued her habits. Am I the a-hole for being suspicious that my daughter was just jealous of my current happiness and trying to get attention for it? From the literature on eating disorders, I saw part of it was about attention. Ah, uh, you refuse to believe your minor daughter said she was feeling ill, who has a diagnosed eating disorder. And when doctors did confirm she was risking cardiac arrest, you were asking if you were the a-hole? That you think it has to do with your happiness? Yes, you're the a-hole. This, eating disorders are the most deadly mental illnesses due to the heart problems that they cause. And Opie asked if she was imagining her symptoms. Unbelievable. Opie, you're the a-hole. It's nice that the impending anniversary for your son's death did nothing to interfere with your romantic weekend getaway and not being there for your fragile daughter. You're the a-hole. This is where I couldn't believe Opie didn't even think about his son. How does that not affect him too? You're the a-hole, big time. I would get banned if I said what I wanted to. Hope you enjoy a fake holiday while your child suffers in a hospital. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.